So one thing that you guys gave me that I didn't expect was a real VIP treatment. I mean, I flew myself out here, but you put me up in a hotel uh, for a couple of nights during this procedure. You do that for all your patients? Yes, we include two nights uh, for each procedure that you have. That's terrific. And it was, uh, and it was a great hotel, very comfortable. And uh, you, you even arranged shuttle service for us to get back and forth. Um, and then, you know, you've got this really fancy office. It's in this beautiful area by the water. Um, and it's just a really relaxing feel. All your staff is very relaxed and friendly. Um, so now that we've done this procedure, and it's all been very comfortable and wonderful, now I'm going to go back to the real world. I'm going to go back to my own home, fly back to L.A., then what happens next? I mean, I, I won't really be traveling back and forth for regular checkups. So since I've come in from out of town, do we do virtual checkups? Correct. And uh, close to half of our patients fly in for our procedures. Uh, mm -hmm. They're coming in from out of town. So we're very keen on uh, making sure that we've got the follow-up schedule, whether it's a phone call follow-up or email and photos. Um, we can Skype or do or, you know, the virtual follow-ups just to make sure that everything is going along well. Do you have people come in from out of the country? Oh yeah, we have uh, quite a few people coming in from different parts of the world uh, on a regular basis. Not only for the types of hair transplantation that we do for hairlines and, and obviously the coverage in the back of your scalp, but for specialty procedures as well, like yeah. uh, eyebrow transplants, eyelash transplants, uh, and other areas of the body. Okay, so what follow-ups do we have from here? Yeah, well, we're going to be following you intensively. Um, at the two-week mark, you're going to be totally clean. Uh, the scabbing is going to be gone. Uh, everything will be essentially back to normal on the scalp. So we'll be touching base with you at that point, finding out that, how you're doing, how you're feeling from that point on. Mm -hmm. um, the regular follow-ups are going to be at six weeks, and then at uh, uh, four months and six months as the hairs start to kick in and grow. Now normally, the eight week, six to eight weeks out from the procedure, that's the emotional low point. You've had the procedure done, you don't see anything, um, but the hairs are just starting to kick in and grow. And then from there, it's all smooth sailing. The growth kicks in, and you'll see the improvement really month by month. Well, luckily, I know, since I've been through this before, I know what to expect. And, uh, and, and frankly, the first time I went through this, uh, there was a low point that I hit. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, when I went to this other uh, uh, large hair transplantation group, they didn't warn me of uh, shock loss, which apparently is very common. Uh, after you <clears throat> have a hair transplant procedure, it's a bit of a shock to the scalp, and you'll lose some of the hair that you already had. And I thought, oh no, I've, now I look worse than I did before. Is this hair going to grow back? But sure enough, a few months later, it all grew back, plus the new hairs grew back. So it's really just uh, a period of a few months where you just sort of deal with, you know, lighter hair, I guess I should say, and then it all grows back, and it's looked great since then. That's a lot less common today with the minimally invasive techniques that we use. Um, there's a lot less trimming of your existing hair that goes on, and of course, a, a, you know, no trauma to the existing follicles. We're working very microsurgically in between the follicles that you have and very carefully so that we're not creating any damage or, or extra trauma in those areas. So shock loss is you know, re, you know, not a big issue these days. So, Doc, I'm sure a lot of people who are watching this are thinking, well, you know, I live in a major city. I'm sure that there are, uh, you know, hair restoration specialists who are in my city. Uh, what, you know, what are the differences between staying local and coming out to, to Florida? So what is it that makes your practice unique? What uh, uh, organizations are you uh, approved of? Are you a member of? That sort of thing. All right. Well, I think uh, a lot of patients come to me after they've been kind of around the block, uh, you know, trying to seek help for their hair loss process. And mm -hmm. you know, there are 100,000 dermatologists out there in the United States, but there's only 50 surgeons recommended by the American Hair Loss Association and the International Alliance of Hair Restoration Surgeons. And you're one of them. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And there's only 100 doctors who are board certified in hair loss. So you have to be prepared to do your research and, and, and to travel if necessary to find that doctor who's gonna take care of you. Um, you know, you have to, Develop a good rapport with any physician, you know, whether it's for taking care of your health or your hair loss or, or some other cosmetic issue. It's really important that you have somebody uh, uh, who can be on the other end of the phone or the other end of the email uh, who's fighting on your side. Right. And it seems that not only are you, you know, board certified and you're approved by all these different organizations, but you also seem to really be one of the few who are on the cutting edge of this FUE technology using the Neograph machine. Yeah, well, I'm 
you know, I'm admitted uh, gadget freak, and so you know, I've got a closet full of uh, of gadgets and and uh, instruments and such that we've tried and and discarded, um, and so uh, we always like to try new things, mm -hmm. and, and if these new things work and they're good for our patients, uh, whether it be in terms of the healing process or the results from the transplant or comfort, um, then we'll continue to use those. And so I like pushing the envelope in that way. Well, I just got to say, Doc, I'm, I'm thrilled. I, I didn't expect that we were going to get as many graphs as we did. I didn't expect that it would be as easy, fun, and painless as it has been. I think all I need now is just a nap to just sort of, you know, relax from all the activity of the past couple of days because there's been so many people in and out. But besides a nap, I feel great, and I really appreciate everything. Hey, great. It's our pleasure. Yeah.